Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a few things in Marketo that you can do with SmartWiz. I know we've kind of gone over some basic steps. These are a little bit more complex that allow you to clean your database. You can automate that cleansing um, if you run a cadence or if you have specific values that you can identify that you want cleansed. And then also, I'm going to just show you a little bit of how you can use a smart list to identify some bad data that might be in your instance that you might need to delete. So typically to do this, I like to do everything in the lead database. Uh, that just allows us to be able to have a little bit more flexibility so that we can find things a little easier. And since this is over the entire system and not specific to a program or an email, that makes a lot more sense. So to do that, we go to our Marketo icon, we click Lead Database, and it will bring us to this screen right here. Now, there's always some out-of-the-box lists that come standard with Marketo. You have a first smart list that's called All Leads. This pulls every lead that's in your database, and it will show you how much you actually have. Um, then there's also leads that have unsubscribed. So anytime somebody clicks your unsubscribe link within um, that unsubscribe is true, it'll actually show each one of these leads. Now there's oftentimes people that will say, hey, you know, I clicked your unsubscribe and I wasn't able to unsubscribe. Uh, so how do you manually unsubscribe somebody? And that's pretty easy. You just go to the all leads. You find that person. You know, let's say we right click and we want to change data value. We can select unsubscribe, select the unsubscribe to true, and do run now, and that will actually manually unsubscribe them. There's also marketing suspended that are leads. Now, marketing suspended means um, we've tried maybe delivering some emails to them and it's taken too long or it's not going through. So those go into their blacklists. Those are, this is where it kind of gets a little hairy where a lot of people might not know how to identify this. So if you're on a blacklist, then that can typically mean that somebody has made a formal complaint about your deliverability and you've emailed them too often, um, or it's hard bounced so many times. So bounced emails, it references a whole plethora of different values, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit. And then there's and out of the box possible duplicates that will identify based off of the same first name, same last name, and email address. And then leads that are not in any program within Marketo. So most leads that you should have within your database should have a, t a program tied to them. If they don't, then you need to question why they exist in your database um, and figure out what the source of, of inputting them was. Because if you input a static list or anything like that, you should always tie it to a program so that it gets acquisition cost. So I'm going to minimize this and we're going to kind of get into some of these data cleansing smart lists. I'm going to come all the way down here actually. You can use smart lists for pretty much anything you could think about. Uh, if you want to run and analyze the data a little differently, this is the best way to do it. So sometimes I'll run a smart list just like you see here. Let's say they haven't opened an email or clicked in one year. Now, if that hasn't happened and I continue to send them an email, that probably means that they're not going to engage with me. So in, in this particular case, let's say you, you have a threshold in Marketo of you know, 200,000 as your total lead limit, and you're above that, and Marketo contacts you and they're like, hey, you need to get your database lower because your threshold is 200,000. Um, so this is a good way to do that is to run some of these smart lists to find, hey, you know, what can I actually delete out of my database that's completely invalid and that's just not good. So to do that, you obviously have to name it. And then if you come up to your smart list, you actually start building the criteria. So we want them to be part of the global marketing list which that's, that was clear up at the top, the standard list. We want to make sure that they were sent an email and any email in the past 190 days. You can expand that out to 365. I'm just doing 190 for right now. 
because that typically we don't send emails on weekends and things like that. And then we have not opened, not clicked. And you'll notice that I'm using an advanced filter. And what I want to do here is I want it to show that they need to be a member of this list, they need to have been sent an email, and they needed to have not opened and not clicked. So I actually wouldn't have to use an advanced filter. I could just do all, which would be one and two and three and four. Now let's say I wanted to look at everybody that's in this list, was sent an email, and um, and I want that to just be its own criteria. But then I also want to look at anybody who didn't open and didn't click on an email completely separately. In that case, we could use an advanced filter and we could do one and two or three and four. For this case and for this smart list, I'm keeping the criteria the way it is. When we click on the leads, it'll actually calculate it and it'll tell us how many people are in there. It'll tell us the people that are actually associated with that particular criteria as well. Same kind of thing for has not engaged in the past two years. And I can also see positive things. So let's say I want to run a report. I want to see all leads created today. Obviously that is not today's date. It used to have a today feature, but there we go. And then now it's showing me any leads that were created today. I'm not going to let that run because it, it, yeah, there you go. We have, we have a few. So the other part of this is, is showing you what you can do as far as deleting more people in your list that just are not supposed to be there. So I have a couple of smart lists that I do some cleansing on bad characters and email address. So I look at, all right, tell me any email that contains any of these characters because these characters are not normal in the email. If they are in an email, then they're likely bad. So I show that and this will show me any leads that exist in that. And I can go from there and I can actually select them all and delete them out of the system and delete them in the CRM if you're synced to Salesforce. And one of the things to remember is as you're doing these cleansing efforts, Always make sure that you check with your CRM admin if it's not you or if you don't have permissions to do admin things in your CRM, like Salesforce. Um, always make sure that you check with them before you do any of this stuff because in a lot of cases, before you delete leads, you have to turn off the sync with the integration um, to ensure that you don't have to keep deleting them and that it keep, doesn't keep syncing the data back and forth. Um, you know, this is a this is a pretty common one, believe it or not, that exists within a lot of people's Marketo instances if, if the email address is empty. Now, sometimes you'll do progressive profiling within your marketing efforts. And so you may have first name, last name, and maybe you don't ask for email right away. I wouldn't recommend that. Obviously, to do a lot of email marketing, you need to have their email address. And so I would always recommend making sure that you have the email in there, but let's say you don't and you want to get first name, last name, and phone number because you have a pretty robust uh, sales team that wants to call right away. Uh, so in this case, you could run a smart list to show how many email addresses are empty. And you could make a choice. It's obviously off of the business and very specific to the business on whether you delete those or keep those and keep continuing to progress a profile. Load. Let's say you have an email address that does not have an at sign that would be a valid email address. So it would actually show up in our blacklist and our, and our uh, bounces, which will in turn hurt our deliverability. So another benefit to doing these cleansing efforts and having these smart lists is it's continuing to improve your deliverability if you keep your database clean. If you, don't, if you ignore these steps, then your deliverability will continue to decrease and it will get worse and worse. And then you can also do, there's a there's just a normal filter in Marketo on whether the email is invalid or not. So email invalid, true or not. And that's based off of Marketo's criteria, which would be fine to go off of, and how many emails are invalid, and that will show that. 
some companies also don't want to have internal people within their email marketing database. So you can also search by, you know, the last portion of the domain that you might have um, at your company.com or whatever. And if the email contains that, and then it, and then you can get get rid of those leads as well. But I typically don't like to do that just because a lot of people internally will test a lot of your marketing efforts, and so it's always a good idea to keep them in so that it doesn't have to keep recreating those leads over and over. So that's some really quick, easy steps on how to do some data cleansing and some automation through Marketo. Um, so anytime that somebody comes in with a bad character and an email address they then will show up in this smart list. I then can set up a program in my marketing activities to automatically delete anybody who's a member of this list. And I can have it run every day at a certain time. That way it can continue to keep it clean and it actually automates it. So that's a quick step and a quick trick to learn. Um, but keep in mind you always want to make sure and always keep an eye on these out of the box lists and always make sure that you're working directly with your CRM admin so that you don't um, do anything by mistake or delete anything by mistake always make sure they're in the loop always recommend doing it as a team if you're if you don't manage your own CRM that's the best way to do it alright that's it for today thank you